This morning we have one of our leaders preaching, and I'm so excited. I've known him several years and uh, come to enjoy just spending time with him and his family. They've been a blessing since they came on board back in May of uh, 2017. Can't believe it's been that long. So uh, it's so exciting to see what God is doing. And uh, I want you to do me a favor uh, and welcome our very own David Rondon. Sorry, I'm nervous, all right? I want to get off with a prayer. It's Father, Lord, I thank you for this opportunity, this privilege, and I ask that you come down. We invite you. Touch their hearts and allow them to be free. Amen. If they came into this place holding onto the things that are not of you, oh, Father, Lord, that they leave out here free. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. amen. I'm going to jump right into it. I have a lot of scriptures. But the one thing I want to share is, how many of you all saved? Raise your hands. Okay, another question. How many are all free and saved? Amen. But truly free? Amen. Any of y'all know what privilege means? I'm going to tell you if you don't know. Privilege means a special right, advantage, or immunity granted, or a, available only to a particular person or group of people. That's all of y'all right now. Y'all have a privilege to be here. Y'all have taken that privilege and came to receive something fresh, something new that's going to help you gain what God has in store for you from the beginning. And free, it's not under the control or in power of another to act or be, a, be done as one wishes. A release from captivity, confinement, or slavery. So I'm going to take you back to where it first started. Take you back to where Jesus made a promise to a man. And that man took it upon himself to try to fulfill God's promise. I'm going to take you to Galatians 4, 22 to 26. The scriptures say that Abraham had two sons from Two sons, one from a slave, his slave wife and one from his freeborn wife. The son of the slave wife was born in a human attempt to bring the fulfillment of God's promise. But the son from the freeborn wife was born as God's own fulfillment of his promise. These two women serve Verse 24, these two women serve as illustrations of God's two covenant. The first woman, Hagar, re represents Mount Sinai, where people receive the law that enslaved them. And now Jerusalem is just like Mount Sinai in Arabia. Because she and her son lived in slavery to the law, but... The woman, the other woman, Sarah, represents the heavenly Jerusalem. She is the free woman, and she is our mother. So you wonder if I want to share to you what law and spirit means. And I didn't, I didn't give it to you, sister, but in 2 Corinthians 3, 6, it says, He has enabled us to be ministers of his new covenant. This is a covenant not of written law, but of the spirit. The old written covenant ends in death. The, but the, uh, the new covenant, the spirit gives life. So when I'm talking about law, and it talks about law, think of death and the things that will hinder you from God's promise. How many times 
have we wanted something that God said he was going to give us, but never wanted to wait for it and put our hands in it. And it took us from focusing on what God had in store for us from the beginning. How many times, ask yourself, how many times have we put our hands in the mix? I know I'm guilty trying to force something that wasn't supposed to be there yet. But I know that God is going to make a way as he did for Abraham. He made a way so we can have these things he's promised us from the beginning. And then... Go to Galatians 4, 28 to 31. And now, dear brothers and sisters, are children of the promise. No, and you, now, dear brothers and sisters, are children of the promise, just like Isaac. But you are now being persecuted by those who want you to keep the law which is death, just as Ishmael, the son born by human effort, persecuted Isaac, the child born by the power of the spirit, which is life. But what do the scriptures say about that? Get rid of the slave and her son, for the son of the slave woman will not share the inheritance with the free woman's son. 31. So, dear brothers and sisters, we are not children of the slave woman. We are children of the free woman. Next, I'm going back up, is Galatians 4, 3 through 7. This is how God made a way for us to be heirs to the promise that he gave us through Isaac. It says, at, sorry, this is chapter number three. And that's the way it was with us before Christ came. We were like children. We were slaves to the basic spiritual principles of this world. But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out our Father. Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own children. And since you are his children, God has made you his heir. At times when it does get rough, we want to focus on what's important. And we want to put our hands, again, I want to emphasize it. Don't put your hands in what God has in store for you. Amen. Don't. I implore you that you, us, need to focus on what God has called us to do. It's going to take time. Be patient. Abraham wasn't patient. He wanted to, to see God's promise fast. So he took it upon himself to do these things. But God had to make a way to make it right. He brought his son Jesus, not for us, not for us to take advantage, but he brought it so we can have the promise that he gave to Abraham, that he would have many children, many. We're a part of that seed. We're a part of that promise given to Abraham. Through Isaac. Now I want to take you to the next chapter is in Galatians 5, 16. (sighs) 
So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide you in your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces constantly are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out what God or what good intentions, carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. Death has no hold over you. Why, the reason why I ask you, are you saved? And are you free? Because death has no hold over none of you. Because of Jesus. Amen. Because of Jesus, we are free. Amen. Amen. We're going to go a little further, deeper into that. In Galatians 5.13... I'm going back and forth, just letting you know. <laughs> for he, no, for you have been called to live freedom, to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters. But does, don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful natures. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. Amen. Well, I think I skipped one, no? I did skip my bad. <laughs> go to <laughs> go to five, seven, and eight. It says, "You were running the race so well. Who had held you back from following the truth? It certainly wasn't God, for He is the one who called you." to be free. Amen. Galatians 5, 22 to 26. Wait, no. I'm sorry. Nineteen, I'm sorry. My bad, I'm sorry. <laughs> you see, when we follow our wants and we follow the things that we want to do, according to what the world says we can do, this is what the Lord says not to do. But we continue to do it anyways, knowing the truth of what we're supposed to live by. It says, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, this is 19, Amen. the results are very clear. Sexual immoralities, impurities, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfishness. Ambition, decisions, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of, heaven, kingdom of God. All these things that are listed here. So I asked if you were free, truly free. Because at times, we, even myself, fall into that category. But no longer, no longer, Amen. none of you are going to fall into that category no more. Amen. Today is the day that you are set free. That's right. Today is the day as you leave this place. There is no coincidence that you're here today. There's no coincidence that we have more people 
than we had ever before. Today is your day that you're going to be set free to leave this place understanding who you are and what Jesus died for. Let's not take for granted of what God has sent his son for, to fulfill the promise to you so you can be the heirs to the king of kings and the Lord of lords. That's who you are. That's where we stand. To come not to just to church, just to come to church. It's to be the church, be the foundation, build yourself firmly upon the rock, which is Jesus Christ. That is who you are. You're sons and daughters, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There's nothing that can stop you. There's nothing that can take it away because Jesus died for that. He abolished the law to give us life. Amen. This is not even my notes. I'm about to go a cappella. <laughs> Mom's letting you know the importance of being free and the privilege that you have. This day and age, we take for granted of the privilege that is given to us through Jesus Christ. This day and age, we take advantage of the, the freedom that is given to us through Jesus Christ. Amen. We don't deserve it. We shouldn't have it. I didn't deserve it. But I'm here today to tell you that you, you do deserve it. Amen. The lifestyle I lived, I shouldn't be here. I guarantee you shouldn't be here. Today's the day that it stops. Today is the day that we lift our heads up high, yeah. walking with authority through the privileges of Jesus Amen. Christ. That's Amen. who we are. Amen. That's who you are. Amen. Nothing more has to be said that to understand how important you really are to God. Good. That's how important you are, each and every one of you today and people watching right now. Each and every one of you have a purpose, have a meaning. You're precious. He says, with the apple of his eye. Mm -hmm. He's fixated on you every day, wanting to know what you want. He says, just ask, and I'll give it to you. Seek me, and I'll find you. This is your day to shine. This is your day to continue to push through the walls that hold on to you. We come to the church to receive, but yet we still are chained. How can you further the gospel or be the church if you're still chained to the things that bind you? But God says, I came to demolish the things that bind you so you may stand firmly on my name. Amen. That's who you are and that's who we are and that's who we represent. Yes. Good. A God that breaks down walls so we may see. A God that takes off scales so we may see the truth. To look in the mirror and ask yourselves, are we truly representing God? Are we truly standing for the truth? I know at one time I wasn't. But you know what? Today is a day that we come together yeah. in agreement yeah. and take it further than we ever have before. Amen. Yes. Amen. See, I was going to share my testimony, but I don't have to. You know why? Because, again, you know where, you, where you're at. You know what you've gone through. You know what God is taking you out of. Amen. I, don't gotta, I don't gotta prove to you to see if I'm worthy for your eyes. I'm not here to serve y'all. I'm here to serve him. Amen. And that's, who, that's how you should walk with your head up high, knowing who you are and who you serve. Amen. Because God is a God of the possible. He makes an impossible person like me and makes it possible to be able to speak with boldness, Amen. with authority. It didn't come overnight. I've been serving the Lord for 10 years, but serving. I was willing to let go, but I needed to let go to follow God. Amen. There's a story in the Bible that says, Lord, I want to follow you. How many times have we said that, Lord, we want to follow you? But let me bid farewell to my family. Let me, be, let me go say, let me go do this, let me go do that before I want to follow you. Let me, let me get right first, then I'll go to church. Come on, that's good. No. God says, not every man that puts his hand to the plow is fit for the kingdom of heaven. But see, you're here today. Each and every one of you are here today. So now, I'll tell you now, you're fit. You ain't crossfit, but you fit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But no, amen, I just want to say, and this wasn't even my nose, glory to God, but I just want to say and encourage you. 
It's no coincidence that you're here. Today is your day to shine. Today is your day to shine. Today is a day that the enemy has no hold over none of you. I proclaim it and stand in authority, interceding for each and every one of you today. As Jesus sits on the throne, he's interceding for you. Live for the words that you want to hear. Well done, good and faithful servant. I am pleased at the life you live according to my will, not yours. Because that's how precious God is. That's how precious God is to me because I shouldn't be here. My own mom told me she didn't think I, I was going to live to see 21. My own mom. And she's standing right, she's right there. She can tell you the life that I was living. But I'm here. I have a beautiful family. Because I said yes. God made a promise to me that I wanted to have a family. And the moment I said yes to him, he equipped me with a family. He molded me with a family. I shouldn't have them. I should be dead, according to my mom. <laughs> you know, but, uh, but, <laughs> but I, just, I just thank the Lord every day for all that he's done. And I know he'll do it for you. Amen. Because that's the God we serve. That's right, man. But you got a glory, man. This, Amen. I don't want to go any further. This is good. Right now, if anybody of y'all want to come over for prayer or encouragement, I welcome y'all. Any of y'all. Just come and let God pour into you personally. Just feel free. Today you're free. Enjoy that freedom. Take it home with you. Take it home with you. Because each and every you deserve that freedom to live free. Go hard or go home. You know what I'm saying? But no, I, I love y'all. Thank y'all for coming. I wish you continue to seek the things of God because it's going to help you in the long run. It may be tough now, but keep holding on. Keep holding on. Each and every one of you have gone through something. Just keep holding on. Keep holding on. Keep plowing. I was plowing for 10 years, and I'm finally seeing my fruits of my labor. So I know it can happen. If it can happen for me, it can happen for you. Just keep holding on because you matter. You matter. We have cards that says you matter. So I'm scared you matter. Better know. I just want to say thank you again for your time. Thank you, Pastor Matt. Love y'all. Love each and every one of y'all. I'll be blessed. Woo!